welcome boys and girls. Today we're going to do partition shapes and do parts with equal areas and express the area as a unit fraction of the whole. Okay. They say to get out pattern blocks, colored pencils, and a ruler. I'm just going to use these um, up here as shapes up here for your pattern blocks. You guys don't have to draw them in there or anything, okay? Alright, so you can use what you know about combining and separating plain shapes to exploit the relationship between fractions in area. Okay, so now A says to trace a hexagon pattern. Here is a hexagon. It says divide your hexagon into two parts with equal areas. Okay, I'm going to have you guys, one of you guys, come up and divide this first hexagon right here into equal areas. Okay, Jacob, top one, divide it into two equal areas. Okay, you guys agree? Yes. yes. Yes, you can just split it in half, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, which means two parts. You have a top part and a bottom part, right? Write the names of these new shapes. If you cut it right here, what is the uh -huh. name of that shape up there? Xander? Pentagon. Yes, it's a pentagon. Now, what if, what if we would have done it this way instead? What would the, what would the shape be then, Callie? A trapezoid. A trapezoid. Okay. So it depends on which way you you partition it, right? Yes. Which way you divide it, it to see what new. Um, shape you're going to get. So we got a pentagon win. He did that. Okay. Now it says write the fraction that names each part of the whole divided. What's this top part? What fraction? One. One what? Half. This is a half. And the bottom part is a? One half. Okay. So you divided them each into halves. Each part is half of the whole shape. We have two halves. Okay. Now, what's the fraction that names the whole part? You cut it in half, but it names the whole thing. The whole shape? Yes. Okay. No, no, no. The fraction. Uh, it's asking for the fraction. What fraction names this whole area? One whole? Uh, that's not a fraction. That's a whole number. Oh! oh. Yes, oh. two halves. You have two halves. Okay? There's two pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, two pieces are shaded, and there's two pieces. Yeah. All right. Explain how you know the two shapes have the same area. How do you know the top of this and the bottom of this have the same area? Okay. Okay, they both have the same shape and they're the same size. Yes. Uh, what did I say? Both, both halves have, that's weird, the same shape and are the same size. Now, let's predict what would happen if you divide the hexagon into three shapes with equal area. What fraction names the area of each part of the divided hexagon? 
what fraction means the whole area. So we want to divide this into three parts. So oh, just think about if we could divide it into three parts. Okay, if we divided this into three parts, okay. What would the fraction be to name each part? You divided it into three parts, so what is the fraction for each part? Who no. knows? You divided it into three parts, like there's three parts, only three. What would it be, Bella? Yeah, you yeah. Want each each part would be one third. You you don't even have to you don't even have to see it. You can just know. If you divide something into thir to three parts, it's thirds. Well, you what each part would be? Yeah, thirds. Now, what's the fraction for the whole thing then? What would the fraction be for the whole thing then? Cooper? Three thirds. All right. Number three, your turn to try to do this. Apply how, show how you can divide the hexagon into four shapes with equal area. Okay, so divide this into four shapes. So, who wants to come up here and do it? shape of equal area. Each part is how much of the whole shape area? Each part. This part, this part, this part, this part. That is what? What? One fourth. Yes, it is one fourth. Okay. Make connections. The rectangle at the right is divided into four parts of equal area. Write the unit fraction that needs each part of the divided whole. Okay, so the blue, the green, the purple, and the yellow, they're all equal. Okay, so what would be each part? One fourth. One fourth, yes. Each part is one fourth. It's cut into four parts, right? The, the green's one fourth, the blue's one fourth, the pink's one fourth, and the purple, or the yellow's one fourth. What's the area of each part? Now, this is area. Remember how you find area. How do you find area? Yeah. Okay, but what if what if there's what if there's not a length and a width? What do you do? What do you do? Count the squares. How many are in each part for the green square? Five. How many in the pink square? Five. So what is going to be all of them? Five, five square. Five square what? Units. Yes, square units. You have to say units when you do area, square units. Okay, how many one-fourth parts does it make to make one whole? Does it take to make one whole? How many one-fourth parts did you have? Yeah. Four. You have to have four. There's four each, right? Yes. Is the shape of each one fourth part the same? Yes. Is the shapes all the same? No. No, they're not all the same, are they? It's just because they have the same area. Right. Is the area of each one fourth part the same? 
Is the area for the green the same as the pink? Oh, yeah! Is the area for the pink the same as the yellow? Yes. Is the same as the yellow for the blue? Yes. yes. So are they all the same? Yes. 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 Explain why. Each shape. What about the shapes? How do you know that each have the same area? Um, I you can count the squares in each shape. Each shape has five squares. Okay, each shape has five squares. Each shape has five square units. Five squares. Okay, boys and girls, this bottom part says divide this rectangle shape into six equal six parts with equal area. Now, guys, this means you're gonna have to find how to make this area be into six equal parts. They can be like this, but they can be different shapes, okay? You can make different shapes, but you just split it six times. So go ahead and try. Okay, to start out, boys and girls, think about what's the area of that rectangle right now. You have three to going down. How many across? Three. Eight. What's three times eight? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay, how can you oh, divide yeah. twenty-four into six? How many squares? 24 divided by 6 is 4. So you need to make different ways to make 4. They can be different shapes too. They don't have to, but they can be. See? Did you divide six times? Okay, hopefully we got them all divided. Write the fraction that needs each part of the divided whole. What's the fraction for each of those shapes? Xander? One six. One six. Each of them is one out of six shapes, right? Each of them is one out of six shapes. What's the area of each part? Each of those shapes has an area of what, Carter? Four. Four what? Square units. Square units. Okay, and what's the fraction for each part is blank of the whole shape? Six, six. Right. Looks like you're ready for Shan. It doesn't ask for the whole, sorry. It asks for each part. Each of those parts is one sixth of the whole. Okay, it says to divide the hexagon into six equal parts. Which pattern block represents one sixth of the whole area? What shape represents the whole shape? The area, or one sixth of the whole area. Triangle. Yes, triangles. Each triangle represents one sixth. Then it says to divide the trapezoid into three equal parts. Which pattern block represents one third of the whole area? Once again, everybody. Triangles. Triangles. Okay, Alexa said that one third of the trapezoid is greater than one sixth of the hexagon because one third is greater than one sixth. Does her statement make sense? Explain your answer. Does that make sense, guys? Yes! Yes! No. yes. No. Okay, Alexa said the area of one third of the trapezoid is greater than the area of one sixth of the hexagon because one third is greater than one sixth. That's okay, that makes sense. We said no because Alexis is looking at only the fractions one sixth and one third. But if you're looking at the triangle parts of each of those shapes, um, 
The triangles have the same area, but since the holes are not the same size, you cannot compare the fractions. And then the next thing, the statement make, make the statement make sense. The area of one third of the trapezoid is equal to the area of one sixth the hexagon. The area of one third of the hexagon.